Last time on Renaissance City. Do I recognize Van Gogh as a, as a super famous painting? You've spent plenty of time in museums. Um, and I there rob are, museums all the time. Right, you rob museums all the time. I roar at the top of my lungs. Everybody for a quarter of a mile at minimum can hear the rumble of my roar. I know of them through the Hero Network. Okay. But I also know that there are civilians around. And as you know, I am very, very protective of my alternate identity. And so I cannot participate in some superhero business in my tux. It's it's a pretty misogynist act. I, I just grab these two kitchen bitches by the hair <laughs> and I clap my paws as fast and as hard as I can. And it is just this crescendo of like cymbals crashing and paint just goes in this vertical spray up and around. All the way to the ceiling. All the way to the ceiling and all up and down me and leave us a stripe of their remnants on the front of my body. Um, as you get him out of the room and start to move toward the front door, he seems to kind of be resisting you and trying to pull back into the room and he's looking over his shoulder and looking over his shoulder and then stops and just lets you take him out of the room. King, let's grab something and take it with us. I thought I was stealing some sort of a priceless vase, but after I'm holding it and getting ready to bail, I realize it was can. I'm gonna exit through the front door and then take flight on my way home. Are you taking Raymond with you? No, no, I gotta, I gotta get the car. And as this crowd of hundreds is standing there, dumbfounded, I'm gonna Ray tear Ray out. Is, Raymond's like, ah, sorry, I, I forgot to take the brake off. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got it. <sighs> and, then, and I'm gonna drop the brake and peel out. You're in a Model T. There is no peeling out. You putter Roll. away at 14 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> I'm going to do the Model T version of Peel It Out. Okay, gotcha. So, so King, you lurch forward um, in the seat, um, and <laughs> you, you guys leave a, a slight trail of paint behind you as you drive off into Renaissance City after saving the day at the Detroit Institute of Art. I'd like to make my way over to Jules and leave a note that says, was this a setup forever yours, St. Shadow? St. Shadow, tell me, uh, what have you been doing for the last week in Renaissance City? I went out to a uh, home in the country, in the Detroit countryside, um, that specializes in treating people as inpatients with, with mental disabilities. Okay. And... Uh, visited with some residents there one resident in particular and um tell us about her so the resident that i was visiting her name is spooks or at least that's what she goes by and i met her roughly 10 years ago um she when i met her there was something about her that drew me in. And I recognized that she had a feature on her face that was very similar to mine. We, we shared a, a nose. And uh, so, long story short, <laughs> um, after some research, I came to the conclusion that she is an illegitimate child of my father. 
and nobody is supposed to know about her. She was living on the streets when I had met her. Over the course of the years, we've developed a relationship, and I helped put her in this home uh, for folks who suffer from, from mental uh, health issues. So I decided in the aftermath of uh, DIA, um, and I recognized that the two gentlemen at the end um, shared a love for one another in some way, shape, or form. And it reminded me how important the one member of my family that I actually care for, um, how important that relationship is. And so I decided to uh, go to the, to the home and spend some time with Spooks. Okay. Um, what is that, you know what I mean? What is that like? What is it like? What is it like at this at this um, at this institution at this facility? So it's kind of a palatial estate um, out in the what would be today the suburbs, but back then would would be the countryside uh, in Michigan, and um, it's it's part hospital and part nursing home. So oftentimes uh, when I go to visit and I, and I visit, um, I visit at night after the place is closed and I only visit as St. Shadow. So on this particular night, I donned my shadow uniform and I snuck in through a window on the third floor that I always sneak into. When you, when you first introduced yourself, it was frightening for her, right? Right. Because you you didn't come to her as Alabaster, you came to her as St. Shadow. That's right. Uh, one of the reasons, one of my motivations for theft when I do it is to funnel money back uh, into the the homeless and the, the mentally ill population of Detroit. And so I would first uh, as I first started meeting with Spooks, I would arrive at St. Shadow to a um, to a homeless colony, I guess, I don't know what the right word is, but to a homeless colony underneath the, the Bel Air Bridge. And um, I would bring them food or supplies um, and I would, I would speak with Spooks and uh, she suffers from delusions and so Obviously, she's she's very scared when she meets me because she struggles to know if I'm a delusion or if I'm real. But over the course of, of many years, uh, we were able to develop a, a really unique relationship. Um, and it, in some ways, it has helped improve her mental health because she understands that not everything she experiences is a delusion and that I was in fact very real. And now she, when you visit, um, how often during this week do you visit? Just one night? Just one night. Okay. It's not even 10 minutes after you show up and she greets you in the normal way. Um, you know, she's she's a bit surprised to see you because it's it's been probably a lot longer than normal between the times that, that you have seen her. Um, she usually expects you, what, at least once a month? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's it's been longer than that this time. And so she's she's quite surprised, but she she's very joyous and, and you you have to, um, you know what I mean? You, you have to quiet her down and because she just, she, you're not sure if she was uh, anxious that you had forgotten about her or, but she's, she's obviously very jittery and, and excited to see you. And, and she's kind of chattery um, even more than normal. Um, you have um, ensured that she does have a private room. Um, not everybody in the facility does, but um, I, I, I think you have kind of made sure that, that she gets the best treatment that they can give. And, and after speaking with her for, you know, 
several minutes and getting her to calm down and ensuring her that you are real, that she's not making you up. Um, I want you to, I want you to roll perception. <laughs> Yahtzee. Yahtzee. <laughs> Yahtzee. Six. Six successes. Is that what you said? Six successes. Awesome. She has, like, on her collarbone, you notice, like, just under her gown, just under the neckline of her gown, on uh, on both sides of her neck, right kind of where your collarbone almost meets your neck, you see kind of a pinkish dot on each side, almost like a burn mark that has had some time to start healing if that makes sense Mm -hmm. um she she can't see your eyes so she you know what i mean she wouldn't notice that you notice and it's not like she's trying to hide it she's just she's very chattery and she's i i'm so and i it's you're real this time right I'm real. Spooks. What happened to your shoulder? She kind of, you know, clutches in her hand, you know, and kind of pulls up her neckline and kind of holds it tight around her neck. Nothing. Spooks. Shadow. Shadow. Yes. Have you been back to the bridge? Not in a few days, months, maybe. It's been a while. I heard something bad. What did you hear? I heard that they 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 brought in a man. And he'd been hurt real bad. And and I recognized him from the bridge and he said other people were getting hurt too. How was he being hurt? What, what did he look like? What was wrong with him? His, his hands were, like his fingers were all his whole hand they you know with the and his, they were all in the wrong direction and they had him casted and there were like these there were these shiny rods up his arms and he couldn't move very much almost all of his face was purple and, and you couldn't see his eyes They hurt him real bad. Does that have anything to do with who hurt you? Nobody hurt me. But these marks on your shoulders. I was just trying something. Are you sure? And she nods her head very vigorously and it's up and down and up, you know. Okay. Do you know anything else? Have you talked to the man about who hurt him? No, he he started yelling and he was he was making all kinds of noise and swearing and he was they took they they took him out. They took him away. I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him in I don't know. It's been 9 days, maybe 10. What was his name? What did you know him as under the bridge? Everybody called him the Carney. The Carney. Yeah. He was funny. He could juggle and he he did like 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 uh, magic tricks with like these coins. Like he could he he would he would roll the coins like around his fingers and his hands and and he and he would, you know, like make them disappear. 
He was funny. But they hurt him. And do you think others were being hurt? He, it's one of the things that he, he was yelling about. How many people were getting hurt? Do they usually take the people that act that way to a certain place that you know about? On facility here? Well, I mean, you know, we're all crazy here, so. I'm going to find out who's hurting your friends. Well, okay, but that's okay. You got, you got to be careful, okay? Maybe just, maybe just tell the police, okay? Maybe, maybe you just tell the police and. Oh, Shadow, be careful, please. Raymond. Yes. In this week or so after um, you and King peeled away as fast as you could in your Ford, what uh, what have you been doing? Have you and Cotton been together? Have you have you been on your own? What's been yeah. what's been going on in 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 Raymond's world? Well, firstly. Um... I like to keep an eye on the on the newspaper so that uh when the lost artifacts get reported I can get uh background information on them so I've got the story to tell. So uh that small knife I got and that trash can I want to I want to hear about them so that I know their history. <laughs> okay. And then uh I'm after giving it some thought, you know, Cotton was kicking me on the table, telling me something wasn't right there at the pub. And uh, I'd like to get back and, and uh, have a conversation with Buster and see what's going down with these gents that came down and, and uh, shook them down for, for a wad of cash. Okay. Are you going by yourself? Are you taking Cotton with you? Uh, Cotton is imperative. I mean... I, I feel like he's, you know, I, I should have been paying more attention to what he was saying, you know, about how uh, Buster was, I I played it all too nonchalant, you know, I mean, I just, it sucks to have to pay your bills, I get it, you know, but I guess I, I didn't realize that the bill collectors don't necessarily come in looking all uh, tough and grisly and, 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 you know, pull the cash right out of your till, so. Yeah, if Cotton will join me, I'd like to investigate that situation further. Okay. If if he doesn't have to go to his day job. Cotton, you good with that? Well, I don't have a day job. Uh, I have been going through some stuff, but uh, I'll roll down there with you. When, when in the week uh, is this? Are you talking about, like, the next day? Or? Give me a couple of days. Okay. Is, is this typical? Does he does he need some time off after uh, King has emerges? Have I seen this behavior before? So I I gathered up. I overloaded myself intentionally. Um, I'm going through some stuff. I've got to I've got to figure it out, and it takes me a couple of days to reset and find ground zero again. Okay. What uh, right. what does Cotton go through? What what does Cotton need to do um, over the couple days after you know triggering King in that way? Right. So, I mean, so we roll out of there, and I'm I'm Rainbow King, glorious in our in our outcome, and we take off and and eventually part ways, and I don't change back. I'm I'm King for a minute. And does it last through the rest of the night? Does it? Oh yeah. Into the night, into the night. I'm, I'm up late. It's two or three in the morning before I finally get calmed down enough. 
that I come back to myself and I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm amped the whole time I'm king and I'm just, I'm like pacing. I'm like near panic attack because I, I, I'm not emotional, but I'm like, it's like a nervous physical energy that I just, where does cotton, where does cotton wake up? So I'm, I mean, I, I'm back at my place. I'm back at home. Okay. And I process at home and, but I, I finally, I finally come back to cotton and, um, and I get, you know, a few hours of sleep and I wake up in the morning, just, you know, wrecked, just drained and, and distraught and emotional. And I immediately, the first thing I can think about is that I've got to go catch up with my doctor. I've got to process some of this emotional garbage um, because I'm just now I'm just holding too much. I've I've tapped into emotional centers that I that I hadn't that I'd repressed for too long. Okay. Um, Wow. So I go to Dr. Jones. (laughs) I go to uh, Marjorie. That's what I know her as. I mean, it's it's Doctor Jones, but I call her Marjorie, and and we have had a good relationship for years. She's been supportive of me and all that I've gone through with my family, um, various things that I've struggled through. Um, fortunately, my my parents hooked me up with this doctor years ago. Um, what I haven't done up until this point is I haven't told her anything about King. I've just been talking about cotton stuff. So, so alarms start going off in my head and <laughs> I, I feel like it's vital at this point. I, I go and I, and I basically the next morning, first thing I go directly to, uh, doc Kirk Davis, Marjorie, and and I I wait as long as I have to wait to get in to see her. It's a couple hours, honestly, and I'm I'm stir crazy, but I I got to get in to see her. It's first thing, and she sees me, and I take an enormous risk, but I've trusted her for a decade, um, and she's been a hundred percent with me, and been really therapeutic for me. I told her the whole thing. I just, I walked her through how it happened. I walked her through what I felt. I walked her through the, I walked her through the image that I see in my mind right before things change. Um, All the stories that I've heard about King and what I become and what I've done and images that I've, you know, I've seen of myself drawn um, later. And honestly, she, she hesitates to believe me. And she's, you know, she's kind of trying to get me to rationalize it. Um, But she's heard about King too. I mean, a lot of people have. And so she kind of starts to come around and, and basically, you know, we process how I took on all those emotions and how I have um, processed them personally as if they were mine and that it was overwhelming and I, I just need her help. So she listens, you know, she's as a psychiatrist, that's what she's very good at. And, um, she, she interjects here and there throughout, you know, and she, she tells you that, um, you know, she, she knows, you know, some of the King stories and, you know, everybody in Detroit seems to have, some kind of a story about King, whether it's something that they've made up themselves or they really have, you know, seen King flying through the sky or um, they were on the street when, you know, the first time that anybody saw King, you know what I mean? There, There are all kinds of stories over the last decade about King. And when you, um, when you talk about, tell me this, has, has Cotton, has Cotton ever 
in the time that he's spent with the doctor over all of these years, has Cotton ever tried to read her emotions? Have you ever tried oh. to use your power in the room and 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 read the emotions in the room? Every time. Okay. <laughs> so so you every you, time since I was capable. You 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 told her about you know the 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 flash of white and then that that image of purple that flashes in the white and then you know right and after you're done talking she i've seen that same image cotton many times always when you're in the room i i never knew what to attribute it to except you but i i i've seen that flash of white and there's this i mean i could I could draw you the, the image of purple that shows up. I've seen it enough. I have to confess something. I, I reach into your emotions. I know what emotions you're feeling. And I'm keenly aware of how that flows. I rarely manipulate them. But I can, and I I won't lie to you. There have you been see a few her face times. drop when you there say that. A few times that I've changed things just a little bit. I just felt like you were getting too close or too worried or too just a few, and I made you feel more calm or more distractible. You, I'm sorry. You violated our trust, Cotton. You, you, do, do you understand that? I do. I do. I'm sorry. There was no malice. I was never trying to do anything to harm you. I don't know whether to be angry or to be fascinated. It is, it is very, it is very bold of you to have manipulated me in that way that is that is a uh, that is a breach you you have to you have to understand that 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 but on the other hand if i can tell you do you do this a lot do you, fascination is this... winning <laughs> i do it all the time sometimes i perceive people's emotions without actually trying to it's just a thing. And when do I try to see, do they all see that? Do they all see that flash when it happens? Honestly, you're the first person that I've had this conversation with. I couldn't tell you. I find that a little bit concerning myself. I'm showing a bit of myself to everyone, it seems. What do you think it means? I <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't even begin to guess. I just I I thought that possibly it was a, a, a an indication of stress. Um I've actually written about it um in my own personal diary multiple times. Um and I had attributed it to dealing with you somehow, but it it never occurred to me that you might also be a a powered person. Please know that I will hold this in my strictest confidence. What oh, thank, thank what God. stays between us? What it, it will stay here, I assure you. But if every time you do that, I see that flash. Does that mean that every time you do that, that someone else sees that flash? I don't know. I don't know who sees it. I'm the more you talk about the consistency of you seeing it, the more I believe maybe everyone sees it. Which means I'm kind of leaving a trail around town because I I'm doing this daily. It's definitely something to investigate. Um I would seriously consider if i were you limiting your usage 
maybe. But, you know, you didn't know what it was until I told you. Did it hurt you? No. Not hurt. It was disturbing at first. Sure. But, no, no pain, no... No discomfort, no nothing, nothing of that sort. Good. But there Good. are people out there that they'll put two and two together. I don't see how. I can't even understand it when I see it. And it's about me. But maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I just mean I just mean in the fact that you're the one causing it. They may not be able to explain it. Oh, I got And you. I'm not saying that anyone has picked up on it at this point. I'm just saying, be wary. Be wary. True. Okay. So, I apologize again for violating your trust. Uh, I, I honestly... If you want to know how I'm feeling, Cotton, ask. I will do that. I will do that. And besides, obviously, I can't get away with it anymore with you anyway. You shouldn't be trying to get away with it. <laughs> with anybody? Because that's the whole point of this thing. I'm sure it serves you well. Don't abuse it. Fair enough. Fair enough. On that note, I I need to lay some problems on you. Oh God! <laughs> I'm a chronic oh. masturbator. Here we go. No, I'm kidding. So I. Well, you are a VRL young man. I'm. <laughs> I I recently took on a lot of people's emotions, and I. I can't get the ringing of their emotions out of my out of my heart, out of my head. I'm somewhat plagued by them. Can you help me quiet my mind? Can you help me let it go? Is this something that you used your power to do? It is, in fact. I mean there there are some Eastern practices, meditation practices um, that might help you to quiet your mind some. But as far as pulling the fear and anxiety and anger from hundreds of people into your own mind, no, I don't know how to help you with that. <laughs> Okay. I'll try meditation. Let me tell you, let me tell you the real reason that I need your help. I I need to be able to control this this thing. It scares me what I might do. I'm when I came here, and I know you know, but I read your emotions when I first saw you to make sure you were receptive, to make sure that I felt like you were loyal to me. And, and I know that you are, and you've stated it again, and I appreciate that so much. I need someone to help me learn to control it so that I can not be out of control when this thing takes me over. Okay. Would you be willing to help me with that? I'll tell you what. Give me a week. We'll meet again. I will think on this. And maybe I'll be able to come up with something to help. That's fantastic. There's a lot more information that I need. Obviously, there's a lot more information that you need. Right. But yes, I'm, I'm willing to help you try to figure this out. I, I'll tell you, just knowing that there's someone willing to help means the world to me and helps set my mind at ease. I won't let you down. 
Stop mind raping people, okay? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. wow. Damn. That's harsh. Yeah. Harsh doc. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> the mind raper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um Dude, now you're kind of creepy. Yeah, you just took a really creepy turn with this. Well, yeah. it is kind of fucking creepy, dude. <laughs> we we didn't really want to look that that intensely behind the veil. Well, you know, um yikes. He's got a therapist. He he chose his therapist as as one of his um links in the city. Um and when you you know, when you speak with your therapist, I would certainly hope that they are open and honest with you. True. True. I don't want a therapist that's going to bullshit me. I got enough people in my life that'll do that. Yeah, no shit. I'm saving hella cash on copays right now. <laughs> this is fucking rad. <laughs> it's why I made such a good bartender. <laughs> Okay, so um, so Cotton takes a few days to to recover, right himself, um, and after those couple days, do you you go out seeking Raymond? Do you run into him somewhere on the streets? I mean, I assume Raymond. Do you have a phone? Do you have a Do you have an apartment? Where do you Where do you live? What do you do? Um, man, uh, you know I'm resilient. I I drive out to Lake St. Clair and uh, throw rocks in the water, watch the stars. You just you sleep know, out think. under the trees? Yeah, think. You know, there's uh, lots of things to be done. Lakeside, it's quiet. You know, I can shut my eyes and uh, try to remember the faces of the people I used to know in my own world. And I just get away from all the fires that burn in this world. You know, I mean, the whole place stinks of it. Yeah. Rubber, rubber, rubber being vulcanized and, and, and gear oil being burned and um, the, the smell of a fully industrialized city producing massive amounts of steel and things made from that steel all of the fire all of the time yeah man i'm sure for someone like raymond who even though you've been in this world for what seven years at this point it's still it still has to be i came from the amazon you know yeah alien yeah so i, I try to get away from it you know a couple days here and there go out throw some rocks in the water and you know eat the fruit of the land and uh like i said i try to try to you know remember the faces of the people i knew and recharge and then i head back to the city and rendezvous at busters and you know see what's shaking so yeah you you and uh you and cotton meet up at uh at busters place perfect i'll grab some sausage on my way there don't forget to put on the parking brake this time. Hey, uh, but you know, had I not put on that parking brake, I wouldn't have discovered that place. So it was a blessing. That's fair. Safety first. Yeah, so like Wednesday? Yeah, there's and there's there's seven or eight other patrons in there. Um, it's not nearly as busy as you've seen it, but um, it's a small, it, you know what I mean? It's a pretty small place anyway. Um, that Aztec coin is is still sitting above the bar right under that light glistening when when the Spartan comes in you know George gives you a nod kind of points up at the coin he's uh he's he's tending bar and you know he's he's got some bottles down he's making he's making some drinks what do you guys do we walking in together yeah rendezvous at uh busters for for Wednesday happy hour. Right on. Hey, it's time we follow up with the uh, bartender and see what was going on the other night. I think maybe he didn't feel like he needed to give us the lowdown at the time, but 
That worries me. My thoughts the same. Um, I think today, Duke, I'm going to be wearing a fedora. <laughs> I got my fedora on. Do you have a hatter? Like, I mean, is there, what is, what is that guy called? What's the guy called that makes hats? Haberdasher. Haberdasher. Do you have a haberdasher? Yeah. You must have a haberdasher. Uh, we made a trade. Made a trade. Okay. We made a trade. What did you trade for your fedora? Well, most hats are just on loan. Um, the guy was getting shook down in the alley after leaving the theater. And I, I walked up on it. And uh, I took the mugger and threw him really far into a wall that wasn't very far. <laughs> and uh, the guy said to me, he said, uh, hey, uh, I'm Roy. I'm a haberdasher out on Gross Point. You, uh, anytime you want a hat, you just come on in. You can, you know, take your pick. So, old Roy, the haberdasher on Gross Point, hooks me up with hats. Perfect. <laughs> I fucking love it. Okay. You know, um, well, I have a skullet. So, you know, there's a lot of baldness happening up here. Though, you know, it's no big deal to me. Hey, dude, I know you enjoy sitting here talking about your fucking hat, but I'm going to go talk to the bartender. His name is Buster Cotton. I, I know who he is. I'm going to go yes. talk to him. And that was uh, my sentiment exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Buster, hey, what's going on, man? Hey, it's the dynamic duo. You guys busted out of here the other night when uh, when that radio report came on. I what a job you did. That wasn't us. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. No. Mm-hmm. I uh, I I went sailing on uh, Lake Saint Clair. Yeah, yeah, I went sailing. Uh, yeah, the whole time. <laughs> I was with him. We sailed. Anyhow, hey, uh, how have you been? Plugging along. Yeah? Hey. Yeah. Tigers won today. It's been a good day. Okay. Right on. I got to uh, I gotta ask you about the other day when we were here. Um, there was something un very unsettling about the two guys that came in here. And I, I felt like felt like maybe there was something... Something wasn't working in your favor. And I just... I want to be here for you if you need some backup. Everything okay on that? It's just the cost of doing business, boys. <clears throat> All right. I mean, I, I, I appreciate your, uh, I appreciate your interest and, 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 uh, you know, you're, you're always welcome here and, but just best to leave it, leave it where it lies. What can I get you to drink? George. Yes, Randy. I have three friends in your entire world and consider you one of them. If somebody is messing with you in ways you don't like, you tell me and I will throw them in pieces into Lake Erie. I'm right there with him. I don't Truth. like anybody treated like that. Truth. Well, firstly, that's a huge compliment. Thank you very much, Raymond. I also consider you a friend. Second. Well, don't take it as too much of a compliment. I spend most of my time at the lake by myself, so I haven't really gotten out and met a lot of people. Well, you... you do you need a place to stay? I, I have... I have an extra room upstairs. I'm, I'd, be, I'd be happy to put you up. Um, uh, no. Good there. Thanks. Dude, are you homeless? You never told me you were homeless. No. I have a palatial estate. Really? Okay. Oh. All right. All right. Anyway. Dude, are you... Hey, for the record, I don't. I don't have a palatial estate. <laughs> right. No. But we, we, I'm, I don't we want know. my friends to think I live in a box down by the river. Right. 
Well, trust me, your friends think that you live in a box down by the river. Right. I'm putting on airs. <laughs> right. I'm you smell you smell like you live in a box down by the river. Hey, I I get in that lake. I bathe right, bathing, daily. Right. Bathing in the lake is not bathing. You still smell like the lake. Anyway, okay. the level of pollution around this time. The oh yeah, massive, massive gross. amounts of pollution. Uh, oh god. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. there was no, there was no EPA at this point. There was they, they just did whatever they wanted to. They poured whatever they wanted. I mean, for Christ's sake, up until the seventies, you know, there were fires on Lake Erie, on <laughs> the. Lake. Okay. The, <laughs> the water caught on fire. <laughs> Yeah. You know, th anyway. there, there's there are some creatures that, that take like a dust bath. Uh, I think I'm going to be one of those creatures then, if if the okay. lake is in such bad shape. <laughs> well, I mean, I'll do. And it's I'm like it's a, not it's not it's not a, it's not in such bad shape, you know, like it will be in the decades to come. Um, but it's also not regulated in any way at this point, and they just dump whatever they want wherever they want because it's not really. It, you know, I mean, while they understand it's caustic, they don't really give a shit. Mother Nature will rinse it away. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll all, it'll all run downstream. It'll be fine. Yep. Um, anyway, so back to George. Uh, secondly, I'll let you know if I ever need your help, okay? I'm, look me in the eyes. I'll let you know if I ever need your help. George, I'm going to teach you two words from my world. And when you say them, you best find cover. Got it? Got it. And those words are, and I'm going to make sure nobody else can hear me, okay? Just me and Buster and Cotton. I'll let him in. Rone Lota. <laughs> you say those words, George, and I am going to smash everything. Got it? Yeah, got it. Rone Lota. Got it. Okay, I'm fucking okay. throwing the beer mug. I mean, I'm going to let him know it's a trigger. Oh, okay. Hey, 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 hey. I was just... As soon as he says it, I'm Raymond. throwing that fucking beer mug against the wall. Raymond. Raymond, I was George. just repeating back to you what you said to me. That's all. Just making sure I had it right. Hey, George, you might want to get some insurance, brother. Okay. If that's... They're not going to insure a gin joint, man. <laughs> hey. In the middle of prohibition. George, listen. Okay, okay. so... I need yes, your God. attention. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you four words of my people and I need you to hear them. Are you are you also from are you another ready? planet? I am not. Are you ready? I'm ready. I need a beer. I know those words. And he turns around and grabs two mugs, fills them up, turns back around, grabs the broom, starts sweeping up the broken mug, just kind of <laughs> shaking his head and laughing to himself. Um, you have drawn the attention of everybody else in the bar. Um, everybody is now watching you. Not that they weren't all kind of looking over their shoulders and, you know, maybe there were some whispers because, um, you know, Raymond is in the room and uh, made all the papers, made, you know, all the stories. Everybody's been talking about the, the Detroit Institute of Art and um, not everybody has all the details from inside the building, but everybody has the details from what happened after you left the building. Um, <laughs> the... It's 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 been the talk of the town, um, at least within uh, word of mouth. The the stories in the newspapers, while they did talk about um, the fight and um, the art coming to life and those sorts of things, the majority of those stories have talked about the real hero of the night being Alabaster Whitingale. As he, Ooh, they know his name. He saved um, more than a dozen people from 
the the chaos and the violence and the destruction that happened within the building um and the narrative that's been pushed especially by alexander griffin and and the mayor's office is that this whole night was an attack on their their promises to um to bring powered people into the light and and their their whole campaign to um show that powered people should be at least brought um under an umbrella of regulation and um shouldn't just be allowed to do whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it so that's there there's this narrative that's been pushed in the media concerning those ideas and and really focusing on the heroism that was displayed by alabaster you know just a man a man um who put himself in harm's way to save other people who who's who's already a very prominent person in the city um and he is now being lauded as the hero of Renaissance City. <laughs> I told you you're going to get a key to the city. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to lean in on Cotton. You see that coin above the bar? Yeah, I see it. That is Aztec gold. Nice. He knows that yeah. he was here when you gave it to... Yeah, but I also understand how this character works, and <laughs> and he needs to talk about his shit. Like that's fair. Thing. That's fair. I'm gonna steal it back. You're gonna steal it back. I'm gonna steal it back. Oh, that's cold-hearted, he, man. He's a he good gotta guy. just he gotta just sitting up there. Any of these ruffians will walk out of here with it. Nah, you can't steal it back. That's cold. Listen, um, when you lean in like that, mm -hmm. I'm kind of feeling an aggressive vibe and it freaks me out a little bit. Would you kind of just maybe chill a little on that? Um, it's just kind of his stature, I think, leaning in both arms on the table, practically laying on the damn place. Low to the ground. I feel I'll you. try it. I'll try it. I appreciate it. Just, just something to be mindful of. I appreciate you, man. All right. Maybe I should have wore a derby. Maybe. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Um, so after you guys have been sitting there, you know, talking and, and, and you finished a couple of beers, um, there's a person that, that comes in the door. Long coat, um, derby hat, mm. gloves on, black boots, head down, and they walk in and kind of take a seat off in the corner, back to everyone. George goes over, um, after a moment, comes back behind the bar, starts pouring a drink goes back over, takes them a drink, comes back to the bar. Okay, at this point, we're going to cut back to Shadow. I don't know how to read these bar flies. They're all weird. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the place for powered people. Yeah. There's all, there's all kinds of weirdos in here. Right. They, I don't read them very well. So, Shadow, um, what what have you done? What have you done after visiting your sister? What's your plan? Um, I, uh, I'm heading to the bar. Okay. Gonna have myself a whiskey neat. You enter the bar. Um, there are, I don't know, 10. Yeah, there are probably 10, 10 11 people in here. Um, you see Raymond and Cotton sitting at the bar. Um, you know, there's there's a table of, of three people. Um, there's a a couple other people sitting at the bar. There's there's people kind of spread out around the bar. 
um, and there's a a lone person with their with their back to the room, um, and George is behind the bar, and knows that knows that you don't you don't do a lot of talking, um, and just kind of gives you a nod. Is there a seat open at the bar? Yeah, many. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a seat at the bar. Okay. He, George. Uh, Shadow. Whiskey. Yep, the usual. Pours your whiskey, brings it over. George, what do you know about people under the bridge getting hurt? Like really hurt? I, I haven't, I haven't heard anything. Keep your ear out for me. Yeah, of course. Is everything okay? I, uh, I just heard that, uh, some of the folks that live in the, live in the colony down there, I'm getting hurt real bad. And I have an interest to know who might be doing that. Uh, that's, that's, uh, have you, have you talked to the police? I give him, well, I'm wearing a mask. He can't see the look that I'm giving him, but behind the mask, I'm giving him a look like he's an idiot. No, George. I've not <laughs> caught the police. Well, I mean, I didn't mean you, you know, like walking into the police station. And I mean, I, I, I just mean, did you, you know, have you? Okay, you're, you're right. That was okay. You're right. You're right. That was George. I have an interest in keeping this private. And I'm, I, I slip him a gold coin. Keep the change. Shadow, you don't you don't have to do that, Shadow. Keep the change, George. He goes back and, and grabs the whiskey and brings it back and fills up your glass again. I give him a little toast and a nod, and I pull my mask up, kinda like Toby Maguire in the Spider Man movie where, <laughs> where it's just your mouth. Yeah, where it's just my mouth. And you're and you're, you're kissing the glass like it's kissed <laughs> and dunced. Yeah, that's right. Yep. I'm I'm I've, I'm caressing the glass with both my hands around it, and I'm slowly bringing it up, and I'm savoring every drop uh, of whiskey, and I'm just now uh, gonna kick back and have a listen to the conversations around me. I I see George stammer a little bit, and I'm still in protective mode, and so I want to. I want to scan this guy's emotional state and figure out what his angle is. Okay. Uh, roll telepathy. Is he is he doing that to George or to me? I'm going to resist. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Okay, well, since you don't know it's coming, what is your willpower? Uh, six. Okay, so Cotton, roll your telepathy. Shadow, roll your willpower. How many am I rolling? Um, telepathy is seven for you. Whoa. Seven. Whoa! You rolled got, seven successes? All, Yahtzee, motherfucker. All fours and twos. Nice. Shadow? Two successes. Okay. Um, Duke, Duke, for yeah. the record. For the record. You know... Spartan is listening to Cotton. I only have three friends, you know, Roy, George, and Cotton. So, you know, I can't, I don't want to upset any of them. So I have kicked back completely. I got my feet on the table and I am, I am melting in this chair. I am, I'm feeling that too. I'm, I'm okay. This is better, you know. Now that you've been told to calm down and you're actually trying to calm down, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just, all, I'm calm. I, you know, I'm calm. My body language just says I'm ready to jump. Now, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to adopt a more calm demeanor, you know, physically. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so, Shadow, uh, what is your emotional state right now? Concerned. Concerned and angry. Concerned and angry. 
Shadow, you see this flash of white, and within that flash of white, there is this briefest moment of a of a purple figure, and then back to white, and then it's over. And Cotton, that's that's what you feel. Uh, that's what you read coming from Shadow, concern and anger. So I like I like to think that I can feel how it's directed. Um, so I feel like it's not aggression. It's not anger toward the bartender. So I'm feeling a little bit more like I can let my guard down. Now I'm just curious. So I lean over to greet him. Hey, man, how you doing? Hi. You having a good night? No nights are good nights. No nights. I feel you. Okay. That's my catchphrase. I feel you. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Back back to getting a mind (laughs) rate. That's so funny. All right. Well, all right, dude. So not in the mood to talk. We're talking, aren't we? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. Well, I'm having a hell of a night, and my buddy and I here uh, are just chilling, having a beverage. You're welcome to come up next to us at the bar and, and chill. I appreciate the offer. I feel like there's a dark cloud above me. Oh, man. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope so you're So the not- two of you. That's just how I live. Raymond and King, um, the two of you, as this conversation starts happening, um, you you both, you know, there's this dour, slouch, not slouching, but, you know, kind of sad guy in a black mask telling you that nights, all nights are bad nights. But the two of you start feeling kind of happy. Mm, I didn't roll any dice. Am I just drunk? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, you maybe, know. maybe that's what you, maybe that's what you attribute it to. Sure. All right, I can ride with that. Raymond, you good, man? Um, I feel good. Yeah. Hell yeah, me too. What's in this shit, George? Barley. Water, <laughs> yeast. Is the is there fucking literalism in the in the water around here? What the fuck? Well, I mean, you, funny. That's that's what's in beer. I hear you. I hear you. And I feel you. Red man. It's all good. Hey, red skin ah. guy. Oh, okay. Racist. <laughs> Were you over at the? Uh... Museum the other night? Nope. I was there. I recognize we you. Were, mud and me. We were sailing St. Clair Bay the whole mm. night. Interesting. You wouldn't happen to have a Spartan hat on you, would you? I have access to many hats. What are you looking for? I can get you a good boater. Something that kind of looks like a helmet would fit your head perfectly. Maybe a Panama hat. Or, you know, your head's kind of small. I bet the Hamburg would look good on it. Hide those ears. I'm not interested in any hats. You were the one that brought up hats. On me. I'm interested in hats on you. Well, I prefer... um, I prefer the newsboy for when I'm driving. And uh, right now I'm trying out the Derby and the Fedora for when I'm drinking. But uh, days on the street, typically uh, Panama. And then the boater, of course, when we're uh, sailing on uh, Lake St. Clair, as we were the other night. I push back from the bar. I walk over to Raymond. I lean down so that I'm basically whispering in his ear and I say, 
we all wear many hats, don't we? I stand up and come stand next to Randy. And then I uh, walk to the bathroom. Okay. Oh. Raymond, that motherfucker flexing on you? Uh, man, uh, uh, it must be the drink. I, I, you know, I, I've just got this stupid look on my face. Yeah, you guys are both grinning ear to ear. At yeah, and uh, I'm for some reason thrilled to talk to this gentleman about hats. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, he he brought up hats. I was just thrilled. It's it's one of the few things in your world I'm starting to know. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know about you know um, ancient artifacts from <laughs> all of the museums that you have right. spent time in and, stole, and stolen things from, and uh, and now you're uh, you're a connoisseur of the haberdashery. Yeah, arts and hats. Right. He comes over and talks to me about the Detroit Tigers. I'm lost in space, but he wants to know about hats. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you're in my wheelhouse you know and plus i'm in a great fucking mood for some reason and that's because of the drink have we ever been like this before duke uh no not that you can i mean not not like okay. this i mean you've gotten okay. drunk it's not that you haven't right. been drunk. you've gotten drunk um but this is yeah this is just this is just joy this is this is almost it's not it's not the level that you feel you know when when you're out doing the mukbala you know when you're out swinging the the sailing, muckler around sailing sailing lake st Clair. it brings me a lot of joy S sailing right it's right sailing on lake st Clair. um it's it's not that level of joy but this is you know what i mean this is you know maybe two steps down from that this is you're you it's just joy yeah, we're getting Ray. Yeah, Ray. Ray. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, dude. I've had a I've had a rough week, but I am feeling so much better. This was I needed this night out, man. I really want to go to Roy's and pick out a hat for that little guy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Except I'm I'm not sure he's feeling it. He doesn't seem to be in the same mood we're in. He's he's in a dark place, man. Oh well, he'll get over it. Okay, I'm gonna. How long are you in the bathroom, Shadow? Just a few minutes, a normal amount of time. The normal amount of time. Are you pooping? No, Chris, I'm not pooping. Thank you. Did you wash your Please. hands? I did wash the hands. Actually, I didn't because it, the suit is really. Who does? It's not very practical. <laughs> Who does? I just have a little, Wait. you know, I have a little pee slot. So oh, oh. I had gloves on the whole time. <laughs> As you're going somewhere else with it. He just he just wipes it on the wall just like everybody else does. Right. It it's the you know, do we even know about germs yet? Um Yes. Alright. <laughs> yes. Yes. Duke Duke, I've I've had my mind manipulated before. I'm I'm gonna ask Cotton if he thinks that's what's going on, you know? Yeah, Cotton. Do you think someone's doing this oh. to us? That gentleman that walked in over there. That dude got his back to us. He's doing what to us? Making us feel like this. Make us complacent. Oh, damn. Yeah. We're about to walk off and pick out a little hat for that guy. Dude, I need to know. And then he could be the one shaking down George. I need to know a guy that's going to make me feel this good. I want to know him better. What makes you think he's doing this? Are you are you saying this all out loud? Or are you are you? Um... Oh, we're trying to keep it on the down low. I mean, but I'm trying to do it without leaning in on him because I don't want to lean in on him. It makes him nervous, you know. So right. I still got a foot on the table. Right. I'm just curious as to. How how this conversation is going down? Are you you're trying to keep it between the two of you? Right. Well, it should be okay. clear. It should be clear that most of our relationship is him trying to keep it between the two of us and me not. <laughs> That's fair. But see, I I mean, I don't 
I don't live that way. I have a hat, so I can hide our faces. We we can we can talk behind the hat. Is that what you do? You you take the hat off your head and put it by your mouth and, and lean in, <laughs> so that people can't. I'm not leaning in. Your, oh, you're not leaning in, right? That's right. You're just right. Not leaning you're just in. talking into the hat. It's just talking to the hat. It's like you're you're like a baseball manager. You right. just take your you just take your hat off and and when you go out <laughs> to the mound and you just put your hat your hat over your mouth so nobody can see you talking. But he's Correct. got full. But he's got full volume. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> God damn it! I know, I know full volume. I'm trying not to include this individual in our conversation. Okay. 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 All right. Yeah, it's a two person okay. conversation. Okay. But cotton, but cotton doesn't care about that part of it. And cotton, when cotton responds to you, cotton is just speaking at a normal volume. Is that is that what you said, Chris? Raymond, get your hat out of my face! What are you doing? Jesus, I don't need you in my face, dude. All right, put the hat back on. Lean back, finish this beer, and try to figure out what the hell's uh. Making me feel all giddy inside. I got my eye on the guy over there with his back to us, though. Okay. I'm convinced it's him. So after, I mean, as you guys are having this conversation, George has made his way out and is, um, you know, checking on guests and 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 refilling drinks. Um, Shadow, you come you come back out of the bathroom after yeah. a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, what what are you doing then? I uh, sit down at the bar, um, but I want to sit as close to uh, the guy who's by himself in the corner. Okay. Um, and I'd like to maybe roll perception, see if Ooh. I can tell anything about him. Okay. Figure anything about him. Um, that do. Instead of perception, do investigation. I didn't, I didn't even think to do that. I'm just looking at him. That's a lot of dice. Yeah. Jesus, how many sixes did you roll? <laughs> I got uh, three total successes. Two of them were from sixes. Three successes? Okay. Um... It's hard to really tell much of anything. Um, collars pulled up, long jacket, wearing gloves, not unlike you. Um, hat pulled low. Back to you. How do they smell? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I hold this truth to be self-evident. <laughs> Parts are always funny. Um, how do they smell? They smell. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to tell in here. You you would have to get closer. Um, Is he drinking anything? Yes. I'm gonna uh, ask George to send one his way on me. Okay. George pours a gin, um, throws a little bit of ice in it, and walks it over. And they look at it, down the glass that they've got, hand the hand the glass that they just emptied to George, and put the other one in front of him. Perfect. I'm gonna sit back, see if see if that let that marinate for a minute. Okay. Hey, so I I'm thinking about what Raymond said. I'm still thinking about that. I'm not paying attention to this dude in particular. What? Right. And so I want to, I want to scan the room, and I want to, I want to feel if everybody's feeling this euphoria, this joy. Okay. Uh, roll telepathy. Oh, I thought you were talking about what I said about taking this little dude and picking him out of hat. <laughs> no, not that in particular. <laughs> but not we, exactly that. This up, are we going to make this a reality or what? I mean, Roy's closes here in two hours. I got four. <laughs> um, yeah, everybody in the room. 
Everybody in the room is joyous except Shadow. Right. Well, that's suspicious as hell. Shadow. He's probably uh, immune to it. Raymond. Shadow and hmm. Raymond, you both see a flash of white. The purple figure, the flash of white. You see it again. Mm-hmm. Well, Raymond, okay. this is the first time you've seen it. Shadow, this is the second time you've seen it since you sat down at the bar. Raymond, dude, everybody in this bar is happy except that dude we just talked to. Okay, I'm going to look around. Does okay. everybody have a hat? <laughs> <laughs> Um, except that dude, you, you have a hat. The, the person that came in, in the trench coat has a derby hat on, uh, one other person in the corner. There's a, there's a a hat on the table. Um, just like a, just like a wool, um, yeah, like a wool fedora on the table, but not wearing it. It's just on the table. Other than that, nobody else has hats. It's beyond me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Just, I really want to turn things on their heads because I can't, I don't really have a lot of problem solving skill here, it seems, but I want to, I want to take the joy from the rest of the room, maybe leave it with, with me. And I want to give that extra joy to the to the one dude who doesn't have it. <laughs> okay, um, roll roll your roll your telepathy. All right, four four successes. Um, Jazz, roll your willpower. Three successes. Three? Okay, so Chris, you get to tell it. Jazz, you get to embellish. I transfer all of this random excess joy uh, into the one dark fella that just came in and talked to us at the bar. And he has this almost involuntary grin come across his face and he's well you can't see him i'm still he's wearing a mask no oh i thought it was just over his eyes no well, it's, i don't know it's, it's back it's down from the, you were, from the bathroom for sure it's back down from the bathroom you you didn't have it pulled up you didn't like. have it pulled up drinking whiskey yeah but he pulled it back down okay yeah you can't see his face i got you but you can feel his you heart but <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, but you throw you so you throw the joy at him. Right, right. So so I can feel him uh, just wrenching internally this internal conflict that he's he's being forced to feel joy and he is it's not his normal feeling and he's resistant. Um everyone else in the bar is oddly aware that they suddenly lost their joy <laughs> and they're, they're they're all like looking around like what the fuck just went over the land here like this dark cloud that just came across not that they're sad now but you can feel the sudden absence uh. of joy they're aware of it all right but it, and i'm just I, observing yeah let jazz embellish i see a flash of bright light and a purple figure standing in the middle. And as it zooms in at the peak of the joy, I see my father's face. I'm mind fucked. What? Uh, <laughs> he ain't happy no more. He just killed all his joy. And then lift up my mask. So you mean so you mean that you you force yourself to see your father's face? I don't I don't necessarily know that I forced it. That's just what happened. That's the image that comes. That's the image that comes at the end of this this flash of light, this third okay. time that it's happened. Okay. Whoa. And then afterwards, immediately afterwards, 
I lift up my mask and I down my whiskey in one gulp. Shadow takes back the whiskey shot, and I need I need all three of you to roll perception, please. Ooh. Oof. I'm rolling dice. Uh I got one success. One success for Raymond. Shadow? Eight successes. Oh, he got holy fuck. Wow. I got one. So one for each of you, eight for Shadow. Shadow. A dove. <laughs> we we've been drinking. Yeah, you got joyous. Yeah. You know, I I'm fucking wrapped up in what hat is gonna look good on this kid's head. You're kind of you're kind of snapping your fingers to the music, you know. The, the radio's playing. Shadow through the music, through the through the din of of the you know small conversations that are going on in the bar. Um, from several blocks away, you hear multiple sirens going off down the road. Mm. Okay. I get up from the bar. I'm still feeling a little joyous. That was a lot of joy that that got put back into me. Mm -hmm. I walk up. I I get back from the bar. I walk up to Raymond. I look him in the eye. Give him a smile. And I say, you want to pick out a hat, don't you? I'm going to buy you a hat. I'm going to get you a hat. And then I'm running out the bar to chase the sirens. Okay. Um, like you, you run full dash fast as you can, right? Full dash fast as I can out the doors. Of and your agility, your agility is eight. Is that right? Uh, let me look. Seven. My agility is seven. Yeah. So super quick. He leans in, says he's going to get you a hat. And it's almost as if. He runs faster than you do, Raymond. Right, right. That's how fast he moves out of the bar. He runs he faster than you. Okay. And I'm still in this giddy mood? Yep. All right, I'm going to look at Cotton and be like, he don't know my size. And I'm going to run after him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> fucking great oh that's so good thanks everyone for listening I'm Duke Walter your game master this game has been um, fun and challenging and so heartwarming because I get to play it with some of my closest friends. I've been playing role-playing games since I was 11 or 12 years old and for some reason this group of friends that I have had for all of these years, we have never spent time playing games together and now that I have roped them into doing this thing with me, um, it's taken up the majority of our conversations, which is awesome. I'm so grateful that they said yes to do this. Um, I'm so grateful that you came out to listen. Um, you can check out all of our episodes on the TTRP Theater YouTube channel. Please follow, subscribe to our Twitch page, subscribe, hit the bell on our YouTube, check out our Facebook. Um, we, we run funny memes all the time and really it's just so much fun to get to do this with people that I care so much about. So thanks again for listening. And, uh, if you want, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at invisible Duke. Um, you can see me on Friday nights for our cult divinity lost Manhattan game. I'm also the co-writer of the Cult Divinity Lost to the Heartland game, which plays on Wednesday afternoons. Check out our entire schedule, um, follow our social medias, and 
Um, I just, uh, I, I hope you, I hope you're well. And if you want to find out more about the Prowlers and Paragon system, check out evilbeaglegames.com. Um, if you want some fun, interesting, well thought out dice, check out icecreamdice.com. Um, if you want to support us, uh, please look up TTRP Theater on Patreon. And I uh, cannot wait uh, for the next episode. So, yeah. Have fun. Thank you.